हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल प्रेजेंटली वी आर डीलिंग विथ गिरीश कर्नाड्स तुगलक विच इज ए हिस्टोरिकल ड्रामा एंड सो फार वी कंप्लीटेड सिक्स सीन्स फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर प्ले सो स्टूडेंट्स as i told you earlier that the scene that we completed recently scene number 6 is a very crucial scene in the structural point of view generally we use a term climax so that kind of climax can be seen in this particular scene number 6 here in the play now you are all familiar about the phonetic ways of handling the situations in the state by mohammed bin tughlaq the couple of decisions that he took especially shifting the capital city from delhi to daulatabad introducing a copper coin or a copper currency in addition to the previous one that is the existing silver dinar and the way he used to get rid of his political rivals is something really very interesting as far as the play is concerned now i am going to talk on scene number 7 the scene is laid in a camp on the road to daulatabad now you might have understood that mohammad tughlaq has already ordered that everybody should vacate their respective houses at the earliest and should start for daulatabad since mohammed bin tughlaq was the sultan and the words of a sultan or the order of the sultan is something like ultimate word so accordingly all the citizens of delhi are found on the road side now leading towards daulatabad as you know there has been an announcement that every citizen of delhi must leave for daulatabad actually the sayyids amirs and some of the courtiers especially the muslim courtiers had some apprehensions about shifting the capital city from delhi to daulatabad they thought that daulatabad is a predominantly hindu region and if at all the capital city is being shifted to daulatabad the sultan may win the confidence of the hindus but all these amirs and sayyids those who are very strong in delhi will be weakened in the course of time in the new place but none of their logic was accepted by any authority over there sultan had already announced it and he has clearly told that no one should remain behind in delhi any one who stays behind or goes elsewhere will be severely punished 
all arrangements for the comfort of the people have been ordered by the sultan they were provided food clothing and medicine on the way and so the people had no need to worry or people need not worry about these concerns so simply they had to march towards davlatabad so this sort of commandment was already announced by the sultan now as soon as the scene begins as i said before we are there in the camp on the delhi davlatabad route and we find a hindu woman who is pleading before aziz who is dressed as a brahmin in the previous scene also we came across a brahmin named prasad and the same person prasad that is aziz in disguise so here once again we could see this character originally his name is aziz a muslim but he has disguised as a brahmin he has already took the advantage of the soft corner of the sultan and he won the case against the sultan also now he is inducted in the administration of sultan the hindu lady who is crying for her ailing child and wanted to take the child to a doctor actually the lady was promising aziz that she will join the camp next day just allow her for a day so that she will be able to take care of her child but aziz as disguised as or in disguise of a brahmin did not respect the appeals that of the hindu lady in fact she promised to return the next day but all her appeals fall on the deaf ears of aziz who wants his palm to be greased i hope you might have understood i used a term here aziz wants his palm to be greased so here i would like to read a couple of dialogues between the aziz an important character and the hindu lady or hindu woman aziz but what can i do there is the hakim stepped go to him he'll give you some medicine in a low voice i have told you what you can do i could try and bribe my senior officials but you shall have to pay for it from this dialogue probably you might have understood in the name of the higher officials or senior officials aziz is expecting some bribe some money from the lady if at all she is ready to pay something he will try his level best to convince his higher ups and then she will get the permission now you see what your hindu lady says but i haven't got a paise on me your excellency and what will i give the doctor my husband is also ill sir please i hold your feet please let me go the hindu lady is expressing her genuine condition she says i am totally out of money i have no money at all i don't have a single paisa to offer you my husband is also not doing well what can i do now 
if at all i approach the doctor i too need to offer him something so please let me go your excellency now you see what is the response of aziz i can't waste any more time on you there is a lot of work here stop screaming and get back to your tent i said get back to your tent so here now you might have understood one thing the opportunist attitude of aziz who is already disguised as a brahmin he is taking the opportunity of earning money by unfair means if someone is offering him money he is ready to do whatever possible but since the lady is not having any paise to offer him so he is not even listening to her problem even azam's advice fell so when this dialogue is going on between aziz and the hindu lady in between this azam also comes who is a very close friend of aziz azam also requests him advises him but aziz is not at all in a mood to listen to anybody even azam's advice fails aziz tells azam that he has denied her permission because the child will not survive and it was a sheer waste of time and money to go to a doctor see this is the self assess assessment done by aziz how he came to the conclusion only god could know he says that there is no point in respecting the request of the lady her child is going to die very soon the child is not going to survive any more if at all she goes to a doctor also no use and if at all i could really pay attention towards the lady i'll be wasting my time and money about so let her go wherever she wants so as he starts reading his books a man and a woman with six kids arrive as he continues reading azam is embarrassed and wanders around without looking at them the family waits patiently from this particular description you can understand the eccentric behavior of aziz he should offer his services since he has become a bureaucrat in the monarch in the state he is supposed to work for the people betterment of the people as per the orders issued by the muhammad that is the sultan he should sort out the problems faced by the people those who are accompanying them and travelling or moving towards tawrataba but now aziz seems to be very busy reading books actually he is pretending to be busy whereas he is not there is a man and a woman they have got six kids they arrived over there requesting aziz they wanted to talk to aziz but aziz continues reading the book paying no attention towards the family azam is really very disappointed with the situation and he really wonders that why this man is not even looking at the family the family waits for a long period of time very patiently but still aziz was not paying any more attention on being asked why on being asked why they are late the man tells aziz that he found two corpses lying on the road he gave them a decent burial see now actually the family got late to join the group those who were moving towards daulatabad when the man was enquired about it the man told aziz that on the way he came across a couple of dead bodies and with a human approach he gave the dead people a decent and clean burial immediately you see now how this aziz is reacting 
Aziz tells him that Sultan's orders are that none should insult or cause harm to Hinduism. Has he checked before the burying them if they were Muslims? Aziz orders him not to do so again and leave the corpus alone on the road. See the whimsical order issued by Aziz. In the name of the Sultan, he threatens the people. He says that Sultan has already ordered that no one should cause a reason or cause any harm to Hinduism. If at all a Hindu is dead, he should be cremated. If at all a Muslim is dead, he should be buried. So no harm to their identity in the respect of their religions. So before burying, ensure. But now you see what is the order issued by Aziz. Aziz says that don't do all these things again on your own. Leave the dead bodies wherever they are on the road. Don't bother about it and move forward. In fact, if at all somebody is dead on the human grounds, the person deserves the clean burial or the proper cremation. But Aziz has ordered whimsically. When asked who is he, the man tells Aziz that he is a kafir. See now. Aziz, actually he is already disguised as a Brahmin, Vishnu Prasad. He enquires about the man. Who is he? Who is he? Then he himself says that he was a kafir. He has to guard the corpuses executed by the Sultan for a week and then go to carry them to the canal outside the city. He has to guard them there against the thews who are the relatives of the dead. They avoid paying fine before taking them away. They won't pay even for the dead body. His words are, now you see here, the man was in the service of the state. Those who are dead, he was supposed to take care of the people, dead bodies, not the people, but the dead bodies. And if at all some claimant comes over there within a week or so, maybe the close or a distant relative of the dead, he should pay the penalty and take away the body either for the clean burial or for the cremation. But now you see the uh, dialogue uttered by Aziz. His words are, the relatives of the dead have to pay us a fine before taking the bodies. Well, if the orders had been obeyed, I would have built a house by now. But no, they won't pay even for the dead. They come at night and steal them. Not just the poor, even the rich folk, the most respectable people of Delhi. I could tell you a name or two and you wouldn't believe it. It is terrible. People won't stop at anything once they get into the habit of thieving that's certain. See here. This particular dialogue tells us that the people in the reign of Sultan were reluctant to pay the penalties if at all somebody's dead body is found on the roadside taken into custody by the Sultan and his administration the people or the relatives were supposed to pay the penalty in order to collect a dead body but the people were not doing so and during the night they used to come and take away the body as if they are the thieves so this kind of sarcastic remark is also made by the characters over here and now gradually we are moving towards the end of this particular scene here you have a dialogue between Aziz and Azam Aziz and Azam listen to him and ask him if he was going to have more children see this was the unnecessary question which was asked by 
Aziz and Azam. Both are very much there. They listen to the man very carefully because already they knew that the man and the woman they are blessed with six children. And now the question which was asked by Aziz and Azam to the man was whether they are going to have a few more children. And the man answers that he will get married first. Azam calls him a dirty man and asks them to leave. So the man is also answering in a very different way. He says that first of all he should get married and then he will be able to give birth to few more children. So Azam could not really tolerate it. He calls him a dirty man and asks them to leave from the place. He feels tired of that life and is sure that any day that may be that they may be in trouble. So Azam thinks that now all these things and all this nonsense is going on. Aziz is simply disguised as a Brahmin and grabbing money from the people. But if at all this is going to be revealed and both will be in trouble. Aziz calls him a fool. See here, when he expresses his opinion in this respect, Aziz calls him a fool and says he has found nothing so far while he himself is in a few months in Delhi, has discovered a new world. What was that new world? The world of politics. Now you see here, Aziz tells him that when since I have been here in Delhi for long and whatever time I spent in Delhi, I learned a lesson of life and the most important thing that I discovered out of my experience was a new world. And that new world was the world of politics. Since it is a beautiful world, according to Aziz, politics is a beautiful world that gives him wealth, position and power. Yet, it is full of brainless people. This is the opinion of Aziz about the people in politics. He says that this world of politics is full of brainless people. If one uses half the brains that Azam used to pick the pockets of others. One can get great, greater wealth and riches in politics. Their future is in politics. So here he says, as Azam has become a pickpocket and could earn a lot, so if at all you use some of your brain, then probably in the world of politics, you will be able to earn high and you will be richer very soon. And now you see here, towards the end of this scene, what actually happens there. At this time, the Hindu woman is heard crying for her dead child. Now you can make out. Aziz has already said that there were no hopes that of the child and the woman is going to lose the child very shortly and that happened. So Azam fears that she will report the matter to the Sultan. But Aziz is sure that she will not do so against a Hindu officer. See the kind of religious, uh, you know, favor that he is trying to take. So now Azam is afraid that the lady may approach to the higher ups and complain against or lodge a complaint against the Vishnu Prasad, the officer. But uh, Aziz says, who is disguised as Vishnu Prasad, that the lady won't do all that because she knew that the officer is a Hindu one and she is not going to lodge any complaint against a Hindu officer. So he tells Azam that they are not going to be in the service of Sultan for long. So whatever possible, they will grab, they will earn and they will run away from the place. And the Sultan has already introduced copper coins as I have discussed in the previous class also. And the copper coins will have the same value as the silver dinars. So when silver and copper is going to have same value, so Aziz has decided that with the help of Azam, he will start counterfeiting coins and he will make more money out of it. And that way he will be, you know, cheating or deceiving 
the sultan and his state and he will be richer and richer day after day and that was how this scene comes to an end there are many number of families shown on the stage those who are moving towards uh, daulatabad and the curtain drops and this is the end of scene number 7 okay so thank you very much for listening to me patiently